OMIS 259, Microsoft Excel, quick introduction. Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet. It is part of the Microsoft Office package. On a PC, on your start menu, you'll find it often under Office or sometimes as a tile. The logo looks like that. When you pull it up, you see something like this. Here is a new spreadsheet. Spreadsheets have columns, which are letters, and rows, which are numbers. A particular cell, this one I've highlighted here, is referred to by the column first, and then the row. So this cell is cell C3. You grab many cells, That's called a range. This range goes from C3 all the way down to F11. And that would be expressed as C3 colon F11. That describes that range of cells, including the C3 and the F11 and everything in between. To be literate, meaning to function appropriately. In business today, you must know how to use a spreadsheet. The market leader is Microsoft Excel, which we are talking about here. Through your progression in My IT Lab, you will get many advanced functions. The purpose of this video is a very brief introduction from me, your professor, Dr. Downing. My IT Lab is a very good resource for learning a lot about Excel, for the most part at your pace. You have to do things each week, but within that week, you can operate at a pace that is comfortable for you. So in red here on this example sheet, I have highlighted cell E8. And up here in the formula bar, you can see its contents. The contents of the cell are simply 294. This cell is formatted with something called a fill. It's filled with the color red. And you have a lot of formats, and you'll learn about those also. A lot of choices. The main purpose of Excel, and it has many purposes, are formulas and functions. Let's say this represented sales for each quarter. Let's put a title in. I highlight the row, click, and I'll say sales Q1. We want to use some formulas to add up. I could boldface these, center, etc. We want to add, well, let's freeze that too. You can freeze that so when we go down, that stays there in our picture, which is nice. Let's say your boss says, please give me the total sales for quarter one. We have seen some students type these numbers individually to a calculator and then type the answer here. Please don't do that and tell people you graduated from Northern Illinois University College of Business because it will make us look bad. The way to do this is with, is with something called a formula. You can say insert, actually, sorry, formulas, the formulas tab, and say insert function. This brings up a little Google. It's guessing that we want to use the sum here. Good guess. That is what we want to use. If we go through this, I click on that, I say, okay, let's use the sum. Then it says, okay, here's, tell me what you want to sum. I can take my mouse here and grab this range. That range A2 to A22. I say, good. So there is the sum of sales. See how easy that was? And then I see the function up here. And once you learn that, you can just type it. So remember that number, 10,107. If I deleted that 
and I type with my hands equals sum left parentheses, I can go up the range too. I'm dragging and holding and then releasing my mouse, and then I can either type the right parentheses or just hit enter, and I get the same number. So the formulas and functions are powerful. When you say insert function, you have a little search bar. You can learn about hundreds, if not thousands, of functions in Excel to do many, many things. The next major thing is the autofill. The autofill says, we've got this, but I want this to be sales quarter two, sales quarter three, and I don't want to type that, especially if I have a lot of columns. And the autofill is a very powerful feature of Excel. When your mouse is in the cell, if you go to the lower right, it turns into kind of a black cross. When that happens, I click and hold my left mouse key and drag and pull. And it fills those in for me. And Excel is smart enough, sometimes it guesses wrong. But it says, if this is quarter one, this probably is quarter two. I'm going to change that for you, is what Excel is saying, which saves us a ton of time. Now down here, the boss, of course, wants the total sales for every quarter. Get my mouse in here, get that black cross, hold the left mouse button on my PC, drag and pull. And notice in the formula bar, my first sum was of the range A2 to A22. But again here, Excel is smart enough. It says, okay, you probably want this to change to B. You want this to change to C and so on. Very valuable. You can get a lot of work done very quickly using these functions. I'm going to get out of this and conclude this um, introduction with a little more sophisticated example. You will learn about the goal seek function in chapter six. So what I'm about to do, you may not understand right away, especially if you're brand new to Excel. Don't worry. Just watch this to kind of see the power of what it can do. I've typed column headings. So as of September 1st, 2020, if your birthday is April 19th, 2002, you would be 18.4 years old. How does that work? I made a formula. C2 the current date, let's just say the current date is September 1st, 2020, minus H3, your birthday, divided by 365 because there are 365 days in a year. These dollar signs in front of the H and the 3 make it what's called an absolute reference. From a simple standpoint, if you make a cell in a formula an absolute reference, it means when you autofill or copy it down, you're telling Excel, I don't want you to change this. I do not want you to be smart and say, well, if this is, if this is H3, I want this to turn into H4. The reason you don't is because your birthday is always in cell H3. So you want that frozen when we auto-fill this down. Contrast that with the reference, the cell reference C2, which we do want to change. This is going by week, and so the next week you've gotten a little older. So here you are C2 minus your birthday, but here you need to be C3. As the date increases, we want that cell reference to also increase. And then the last thing I'm doing is your balance. And what we're trying to figure out is, let's say when, when you're 55, I'm older than 55, but let's say you look at me and you say, I see Dr. Downing, he's struggling. Wouldn't it be nice if I had a million dollars when I was 55 so I didn't have to struggle? I could relax. And the question is, how much do you need to save per week if you're getting an annual interest rate of about 11% and over 100 years, the stock market has performed at about, on average, 
11% per year. So if you invest it in stocks, what would I need to save to be a millionaire when I turn 50? So we're calculating the balance here. That's H1, how much you saved that week, plus 1 times H2, the interest rate, divided by 52 weeks in a year. A little bit of a complicated financial formula. But once you have seen that a little more advanced and gone through your business education, that won't seem so complicated. So I scroll down. Well, let's freeze these top things so I know what's going on. Let's do what we did in the last example. Freeze the top row. You're going down here. The critical thing is when do you turn 50, given that being your birthday, given these assumptions. You would first turn 50... in 2052, okay? So we want your balance that day, which is cell E1648. Remember that. We want that balance to be a million dollars. And look how powerful Excel is. We go up here and we go to the data tab. And again, you'll learn about this in chapter six. And we go to data analysis. Oops, no, we don't. We go to what if analysis, and you'll learn all these. And we do use a tool called Goal Seek. And Goal Seek says we want cell E1648. That's the cell we're interested in. We want that to be 1 million. And what are you going to allow the changing cell is, what are you going to allow Excel to change? And for us, that's H1. We want Excel to tell us, how much do I have to save per week to have a million dollars when I'm 55? And then all you got to do is click OK. And it figures it out. And here is a sidebar, you know, that's doable. I'm not a rich person, but I wish I would have saved $67.07 per week when I was your age, because then now, if these formulas are correct, and they are, I would have, I'm older than 55, but at 50, or sorry, than 50, but at 50 years of age, I would have had a million dollars. And you can see it just keeps going up. That's by just saving $67.07 a week. That should be motivating. That's partially the power of compounding. If you get a good average interest rate. Anyhow, that kind of shows the power of Excel. This has been a quick introduction. You are going through all five chapters of Excel in my IT lab and then part of chapter six. You touch on this goal seek. Good luck. I hope you're excited. It is a very powerful program, and it is very necessary for you to know a spreadsheet, and in particular Excel, to be a competent business professional. Good luck.